again. We are holding Daf Nun, Nun Beis Omud Sheini. Today's Daf is Daf Nun Gimel. And we will begin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 lines from the bottom. Basically, what the Gemara is uh, discussing over here, the Gemara discusses uh, the, the um, the Gemara discusses the Indian of uh, of Shemitah. Now, uh, of Shemitah, and once, like I mentioned this before, that every time the Gemara in Psachim mentions something about having to do with uh, Zroyim, it expands on it because there was no Gemara written on the Seder Zroyim. So the Gemara discusses now Shemitah, which we discussed before, the getting rid of the fruits. So Reb El I. Rab Erlai cuts Kafniyosa de Shvias. He cut um, this Kafniyusa on Shmita. Kafniyusa is a is a, a tree. He cut down a tree that had these small fruits on the tree, tiny fruits, unedible fruits, but nonetheless fruits. And so he cut down the tree. So what's the problem? The problem is by by uh, cutting down the tree, you're destroying the fruits. And although it's not yet fruit, but it's, uh, it possibly is co- considered fruits because it's small. So the Gemara says, Heichet Ovid Hachi, how is he allowed to do that? The, the, the Pasuk says, La'ochla, you're only allowed to eat fruits of Shemitah, Amar Achmada, the Torah says, V'loy lehefset, you can't cause it uh, to be destroyed and lost. So how is he allowed to cut down this tree with these small, tiny fruits on it? V'chitaymo, would you want to say, Hanimili, when was it said that you're not allowed to destroy fruits of Shemitah's fruits? Is Hechev the Nachas the Peret. When it already became a fruit, then you're not allowed to destroy it. Abel Hechev the Loy Nachas the Peret. But when it did not become a fruit yet, which is very small, Loy, then there's no problem of destroying it. If that's the case, that's not true. Well, Amar Rab Nachman, Amar Rab Abavua. Rab Nachman said in the name of Rab Abavua. Hani maschale de orla asire. Hoyl venasu shoimer le peri. What's maschale? Maschale is like a shell or like a, a small thin covering for these tiny fruit. When the fruit comes out, there's some sort of like pr- protective cover on the fruit until the fruit matures a little bit and then that cover falls off. So Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman said, that these maschale of arla fruits are aser. They're not the fruit itself, but they are called a shoimer leperi, a guard to the fruit itself. So if, the, if it's a new tree and it has this maschale, you're not allowed to even eat that maschale, that covering of that fruit. Wait a second. When does this, uh, when does this covering come onto the fruit? The chufri only when it's, when it's a very small fruit. But beyond that, it falls off. The kakarele peri. And we call it a peri even when it's very, very small. So back to the, so we see that even though a fruit is tiny, it's still called a fruit. So again, how did Rabbi Lai cut down this tree with this kaf niyosa, these tiny fruits on it? He's destroying fruits. And even when it's small, it's considered to be fruit. So the Gemara says, Rav Nachman, the Omer Krab Yosi. Rav Nachman held that Krab Yosi, that a tiny berry, a tiny something, is still considered a fruit. But the Rabbanon are going to argue, and that's Rabbi Lai went according to Rabbanon. What is Rav Yosi? Now we learned in the Mishnah, Rav Yosi, Aimeh, Rav Yosi says, Smodar, Smodar, also Mabneshu Oisi Peri. A Smodar is the flower of the fruit. My understanding is that this is a grape, this is grapes, right? It's not grapes, actually. It's the flower. It's the pre, pre set stage before it becomes a flower. And then from this flowering out come the fruit itself. So when it's at this tiny, tiny stage, Rabbi Yossi says it's already also because of, uh, it's also because of Arla, grapes, that that's, if it's in that kind of side in the flowering stage, prior to it becoming even a, 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 you know, a berry, it's still considered a fruit. So Rabbi Yossi has this opinion, tiny, tiny things are still considered a fruit. 
Upligi Rabbanan Alei, but the Rabbanan argue in it. So they hold, no, it has to be even bigger size in order to be cut, it be called a fruit. So Rabbi Lai went according to Rabbanan. Very simple. And that's why he permitted himself to cut down that tree on Shemitah. Askif lo Rab Shimi bar Nerdoi. Rab Shimi bar Nerdoi asked the following question. Umi pligi Rabbanan alayd Rab Yaisi b'shar ilanis. Do the Rabbanan argue against Rab Yaisi by other trees? In other words, it's mashma that the Rabbanan will hold that even by other, by other trees, yes, it has to be a big fruit in order to be, for it to be called a fruit. Only Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion that it has to be tiny. So, v'hotnan. And from this proof, we're going to try to prove that the Rabbanon would also hold that any other fruit besides grapes, even when it's a drop of a tiny berry or something like that, it's still called a fruit. Even the Rabbanon would agree to that. So, v'hotnan, we learned in the Mishnah, when it, are you not allowed to cut trees on Shemitah? In other words, there's so many fruits on these trees and it's already called fruits, you're not allowed to cut down the tree. Every tree, as soon as it, the leaves start coming out, even prior to the little flowering, a leaf that comes out of the tree already is considered a problem for you to cut down the tree. Ubeis Hillel Oimer, Beis Hillel says, it depends on the tree. Hecheruvim, carob trees, Mishi Yishar Shururu. It means it, it becomes like a chain. I'm not sure how, if you look at the fruit, you can see that there's some chaining that you can see. That's the start of the fruit coming out. Bahagafonim, grapes. When is grapes considered st- the start of growth? Mishi Yagriu, says the Gavar, says, says Beis Hillel when it grows a little bit and when it's called Geirua. And the, the Gemara is going to say in a moment that it's the size of a, of a white bean. The Hazesim, olives, is Mishé Yonetsu. Olives have this shell covering on it. When the shell starts growing around the little olive, then already that olive is, is enough called a fruit that you're not allowed to cut down the tree. And here's the point. Ushar kali nonois, this is the main point. Every other tree, says the Beis Hillel, Mishi Yaitsuyu, as soon as it pops out, a little drop, already it's, you know, to cut down that tree. Well, Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi said, Hu boiser, hu gerua, hu pololavim. Gerua is the same size as boiser, which is a little greater than smother. Boiser means it's a berry. It's like a berry size. And it's the size it's pull a lover. It's a white bean. So the Gemara just just explains that. Wait a minute. We're talking about grapes. It's not a white bean. Pull a love and salkadaita becomes a white bean. Alaema. It means to say she uroi ke pull a love When the grape turns into the size of a white bean, that's called gerua. And another name for gerua is boisar, more than smother. So the Gemara says, who is the author of Beis Hillel? In other words, Man Shamet Lei Do Omar Boiser in Smarter Loi. Who is the one step higher? Who is the author of that Mishnah that says only when it reaches the size of Boiser, when it's the grape is the size of a white bean, that's when there's a problem of cutting down the tree. That's and Smarter, but if it's less than that, if it's just like a flowering bud, like I showed you in this picture over here, if it's just this size, then it's not considered a fruit. Rabbanan. So this whole mission is according to Rabbanan. And yet, this whole mission is according to Rabbanan, and yet the Ketani, Shar Ki Koli Lonis, that the rabbis hold, that every tree is Mishi As soon as a drop comes out of it, as soon as something pops out, you're not allowed to cut down the tree. So back into the question. Let's go back to the question. Rabbi Lai cut down this tree that had a tiny grape. That a tiny, not grape, it was tiny, the fruit was tiny. So the Gemara says that how is he allowed to do that? You can only, you're not allowed to destroy fruit on, on Shemitah fruits. Then the answer is because it's too small. If it's too small, even the Rabbanon hold, you still cannot cut them down. As soon as they, as soon as the fruit pops out of the tree a little bit, you're not allowed to cut down the tree. So how did Rabbi Eli cut down this tree? Ella, Rabbi Eli, so the Gemara answers, Rabbi Eli, benishane cats. He cut a, a male, Rashi says it's called a male palm tree. That the, they come out with dates that don't ever ripen. 
So how do you, what, what, are they fruits? No, it's usually you cut them a little bit and you put them in a, in a, in a, in a oh. basket made of the leaves of, of, of the palm tree. And they always remain small. So they're not such that so tiny, these fruits never become real fruits. And therefore, those type of fruits, I think they do have the Kedusha of Shviya Sin, but they're not subject to the problem of destroying fruits because they're not really called fruits. And therefore, that was the tree Rabbi Lai cut down. The rabbis, Tan Rabban, we learned in Nebraisa. Remember we said before that you're allowed to eat the fruits as long as it's out there in the field and an animal can eat the field, eat the fruit. But if it's, if, it's, if it's not out there yet, then you're not allowed to eat it. So Tana Rabban and the rabbis taught, You're allowed to eat grapes in your house, in your refrigerator, until the, the grapes of this place called Oichel, there's a place called Oichel, that's a place that had a lot of vineyards, and, and when, they, when you, in that place, there's no more hanging uh, vines, in, in other words, you can't find grapes there, then for, for certain, you can't uh, eat the grapes that are in your storage. You have to get rid of them. But if you find that there is another place that has, still has grapes, you could rely on, on them. In other words, you could eat as long as you found a place that still has grapes in the field. The Gemara Mishnah said, the Bryce says, you're allowed to eat the olives until the final uh, uh, olives are gone from a place called Tekoa. Tekoa is a place that they grew olives. And the, because there's a lot of olives and oil there, the, tire, the Gemara says that there was a lot of smart people there because having a lot of olive oil makes a person smart. Anyway, when in the place of Tekoa, they don't have olives anymore, you're not allowed to eat olives in your home. Rabbi, you have to get rid of it. Rabbi Lezer Oima Achi Yichla Achrin Shagush Chalav. So they get rid of the last of olives that are located in Gush Chalav, another place. They had a lot of olive, olives, and that was in the in the that was in the part of Israel that belonged to Asher. And now today, and what does it mean? Get there's no more olives on the tree. Kidei she Oni, if a poor person will yotze will go out, the Eidemoitzim cannot find an olive tree. He can't collect enough olives, not on its branches, by its, uh, its trunk. He cannot get a roiva. He cannot get, he cannot put together a quarter of a calf. So let's say a pound. He can't collect a pound from a tree. Then you know it's gone. You're allowed to eat dried figs. Until they, the, the, in Beishine, all the dried figs are all the figs are gone off the trees? Then you can't you can't eat your great uh, your your dried figs in your home. Am Rabbi Huda, so what's the place called Base Hine? Page Base Hine. Am Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Huda said Lo Hiskru Page Base Hine El Ele Inyan Maser that the Page Base Hine was only mentioned as a signpost regarding Maser that the that we learned the Tanan Page Base Hine. The, the figs that come from this base hine, vaahine, and dates, the tavyona that come from tavyona, both of these fruits, the figs that come from base hine, and the dates that come from tavyona, chayavim b'maisa, chayavim b'maisa. And these, these type of, of figs and dates are very, very small. So therefore, the, you might think they're not fruits, they're the chayav in maisa. So that's where we learned about Pagi Beishine, regarding the halachos of Meiser, but Lagabe, the halachos of Shviyas, perhaps there is no halacha of getting rid of these fruits on Shemitah because, because they're so small, they're not considered fruits like regarding Shemitah. So it could be that, the, that regarding Shemitah, there's a different din. And we don't ref, you refer to Pagi Beishine as the signpost for all figs in Israel when you have to get rid of them. In the Gemaras that you have, they have two dots over here. 
and you can see that we're still in the middle of a brisa that's listing off different dates of different fruits when you have to get, when you're not allowed to, when you can't have to stop eating them. And for some reason, when they, they left these two, whoever put these two dots in obviously made a mistake. But they, in the way they redid the Gemaras, they always, if any error that entered the Gemara was always left there. The Brisa continues, you eat dates. Until the final date, you can't find dates in the place called Soyar. Of Shimon Gabriel Oimer of Shimon Gabriel says, Oichlin al shel bein akvifim. As long as there's dates on between the branches, bein oichlin al shel bein hashitzim. But if if there's dates, but it's only between the thorns, and animals can't get to it, that's that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be counted, and that would be considered as if you can't get dates anymore. Because even though there's physically dates there, it's not accessible to an animal. And therefore, Shem and Galil uh, says, as only you check only if the branches have dates. Now, we just gave you dates, when to stop eating grapes, when to stop eating olives, and it all depends on what's doing in a certain place. In a certain place, if they can't have dates and they don't have olives and they don't have figs, then you can't have it in your house. So the Gemara asks, Uraminu, let me ask you a question. Oichlin ba novenata Pesach. The Bryce says you can eat grapes until Pesach time. Bazeisim olives, Adat Saras till Shavuos time. Bagroigris, Adat Chanukah. Bagroigris, you have to, you, you can wait till Chanukah time. But tomorrow, but dates, Adat Purim. So, Ve'omer Abbe, Ve'omer Rabbi Yechidin, Tarte Basreis Machlin. He turned around the last two. In other words, he would say, Begroigris is till Purim, and Betmarim is till Chanukah. Fine. But this Brysa, nevertheless, gives the time schedule having to do with Yom and Tovim, times of the year, not in places. So how do you resolve the contradiction where one Brysa says, Oichlim ba'am novim, as long as you find grapes in the place called Oichel. Oichlim b'zeisim, until you find olives in Tekoa. And here it says, until Pesach, until Shavuos time. So the Gemara says, Idi be'idi chachi'ura. First there it says that they're both one share. In other words, in Tekoa, and in Oichel, the grapes are gone, Pesach time, the olives are gone, the Shavuos time. It just gives you a place, but here it gives you the time, but they're both the same shear. They're not contradicting each other. Levi is saying that if you want that, I can tell you, Oktani Behedya, the Bryce says, if Yesh mehen, if you find the latest place, Oichlin Aleim, you can eat from them. In other words, let's take a look at grapes. Grapes, you have to wait till this place called Oichel, they don't have grapes anymore. Then the Brysa says, but if you find a place that has grapes, and yesh mu'charis man, if you find a place that has grapes, that, that still has grapes, even be after Oichel got rid of all their grapes, that they don't have any more grapes, you can still eat, you can still eat the produce in your house because there's still somewhere that has grapes. This Brysa says the final, the last moment where you can be certain that you'll never ever find grapes anywhere is Pesach time. And same thing with olives. Technically, you look to Tekoa for olives. If you find a place that has olives, even if Tekoa does not have olives, you can still eat your olives in your house. But after Shavuos, you can for sure be certain that there's no more olives anywhere in Israel and you have to get rid of it. That's how you resolve the contradiction. New Gemara. Tanya, we learned in the Brisa. Rav Shimon ben Gamliel Oimba, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel says, Simon Lahorim, if you want to know, want to know if an area, they didn't have like satellite and they didn't have planes and they, if you, you, you're on a piece of land and you want to know, is it a mountainous area? Look around for milin. Milin are gall, gall nuts, which is used for making dyes, paint. Uh, but that was, those you'll find there. But other trees that you find on the mountains are not, are not, pre, are not nice because the air is, is high, the elevation is high, and the trees are not good. The Gemara, what's the, what's the nafkimina? The Gemara is going to explain in a minute. Simen la'amokim, if you want to know if you're in a valley, the column. If you find a lot of palm trees there, that's a sign that you're in a valley. Simen la'amokim, if you want to find if you're in a marsh area, right, there's a lakonim. You find a lot of reeds, like in uh, Back Lawrence or something, uh, right where I live, all the way, I don't live in Back Lawrence, but if you go further back, there's a lot of reeds and marshland. 
So if you find reeds there, that's, you know you're in a wet area. Simen l'shvela, if you want to know if you're in a flat plains, shikma, if you find a lot of sycamore trees there, they grow well there. I can't prove it exactly. I find a, a Pasuk in Tanakh that mentions that idea. Shunema, it's a Pasuk that says, the king, as a Kasef, the king of Solomon, spread, he was so wealthy, he gave out his, 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 gold, his silver, his money, in Jerusalem, like stones, because there's plenty of stones in Jerusalem, and like the and cedar trees, cedar wood, which is expensive wood, Nosam Kashikman Ashabashvelo, he gave it as 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 common as you find sycamore trees in the Shvela, the Roiv in abundance. In other words, just like you find a lot of sycamores in Shvela, that's how much a rosim, high, very high, expensive wood, Yush uh Melech, who was the wealthiest person in the world, distributed in Yushalai. So the Gemara wants to understand. Simen Laharim. You told me a sign that you're in a mountainous region. Milan, if you find gold nuts. Simen Laamokim. If you find, if you want a simen that you're in a valley, the column you find a lot of, of, of um, palm trees. Nafkimina, what's the difference? The answer is Libikurim. Bikurim is, has to be brought from Shivas Haminim, but not just from the Shivas Haminim, the finest version of the Simen of Haminim. So the Tanam, we learned in the Mishnah, you can't bring your Bakurim to the Kayin only from the seven species of Veloi. So therefore, you can't bring it from, you have to bring it from the nicest, finest quality of, uh, of that type of fruit. So therefore, Veloi mit Kalim Shebaharim. You can't bring it from dates that grow on a mountain because dates grow best in a valley. They don't grow on a mountain. So therefore, uh, you cannot bring your the dates for Bikurim if the if the tree grew on a mountain because that's not high quality the uh, dates. Veloy meperis shaba mokim and not fruits like this means like wheat. Chita is wheat is part of the Bikurim and Saorim. Those that grow in a valley, you're not allowed to bring Bikurim would not qualif- uh, qualify there because those type of fruits that grow there are of inferior quality because it's in a valley and it's very, the rains there and it, it moistens, Rashi says, it, 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 the, the, the wheat become very moist and they become, they spoil faster. So you have to have it from the best quality foods. That's why I have to know if it's in a mountainous region or I'm in a, in a valley. You want to know if you're in a, in a marshland, Conan, if you find a lot of reeds, Dafkimita, what's the difference? Lenachal Esa, is that a good place for the Egla Arufa? Because the Egla Arufa, as you know, when someone was killed, they, and you don't know which city it was, they measure to the closest city and they take a young calf and they, and they chop off its, uh, from the back of its head, its head, and in that place, by Nachal Esa. So it has to be like a marshland and therefore, it has to have reeds there. And if it doesn't have reeds there, then it's not called a nachal. The Torah says you have to be by in a marshland in order to, to do the mitzvah of egla arufa. Simen la shvela. If you want to know that if you're in a in a shvela in a flatland plains, shikma. If you find sycamore trees, nafkamina. What's the nafkamina? Lemeka chumemkar. It means that if someone says, "I'm selling you a shvela," right? I'm selling you a shvela. So the way he, he can prove that, he's, that, that the land that he's selling is a Shvela land if you find a lot of sycamore trees there. That proves it. So the Gemara says, once you, now that you came and told us a nafkimina of Mecca Chamemkar, kulinami le Mecca Chamemkar. You can say that the nafkimina of knowing all this is le Mecca Chamemkar. In other words, the reason why, what's a sim in the harem? Milan, what would be the nafkimina? Well, what do I need to know that? If a guy says he's selling you a mountainous region, there must be meal in there, there must be gall nuts there. If you don't have gall nuts, then he's not, he's not selling the truth. And therefore, you know, you know that it's a mekoch tos, it's a similar mock in the column. And again, same idea. The guy's selling you a valley uh, land, you have to know that there's, there's the column, palm trees there, because if there isn't, 
then you know that it's not really considered valley land and he's not really selling you what he's saying, telling you he's selling you, and it could be a Mekach Tawas. So that's the Nafkamina, and that's this Gemara, defining different uh, uh, geographies, different parts of the land. Next Mishnah. There was, a, there was a halacha that you have to know, a very interesting halacha, that if you own an ox, that there was a minic that, that the Jewish people the Jewish people don't sell uh, um, oxes to Goyim. Why don't they sell an ox to a Goy? Because, because there's a chashash that you might rent or lend your ox to a Goy. And an ox is used to carry something. And when you lend it to a Goy, the Goy is going to work on Shabbos with your ox. And the Torah says that your ox has to not work on Shabbos. So the halacha is we don't, we don't sell oxes or big animals to goyim. The question was, what about small animals like sheep and goats? So there were some places that had admitted not to sell even a sheep and goat to a goy, lest you come to sell a big, large animal to a goy. So the Gemara Mishnah says, In a place where the, the minig is to sell small animals, la goyim to goyim, you could go with the minig of the place. Sell or, or lend? Sell. Because they were goyz, again, they were goyzer that, we'll see it right now in the Mishnah. You're not, there was a minig that you're allowed to sell small animals to goyim, you're allowed to sell. If there was a place that the minig, they don't sell small animals to goyim, ain't moichrin. Now, why wouldn't they sell a small animal to a goy? What's wrong? Why can't you sell a sheep to a goy? Because of this reason. You're never allowed to sell a large animal to a guy, like an ox or a donkey. A golem, whether it's a baby a ox, or a baby donkey, doesn't matter whether it's a whole animal or a broken animal. You're never allowed to sell these to a guy. And the reason is because the chashash was that you may take a healthy animal and sell, tell the guy, listen, I'm not going to sell it to you, but I'll lend it to you, or I'll rent it to you. Now, but if you rent it to a guy, and the guy does work with it on Shabbos, you get an Avera, because, because you're, the Torah says, Laman your, your ox and donkeys are not allowed to work on Shabbos. So therefore, the minute was never, the, the halacha is, that is the halacha, that you're not allowed to sell a behemah gasa to a guy. But some places had took that and extended that halacha and put a stringency of a minig not to even sell a behemadaka to a guy. So it depends what your place is. So that's one one type of of, of a problem. Rabbi Yehuda, now by the way, there's one type of you're you're not allowed to uh, have your animal do work, carry a load on Shabbos out in the street. That's halacha. But there's also a halacha called that even if it's not your animal, even if it's not your animal, you're not allowed to cause an animal to walk with, your, with any load. That's called mechamer behemtoi. That's leading an animal. That's also asr on Shabbos. Of loisasa kol malachi. You're not allowed to cause the animal to do a malachi, even if it's not your animal. So there's a lot of problems with behemagasas because they're used to carry things. So therefore they said, don't sell it to a guy. Rabbi Yehuda Mate Beshvua. Rabbi Yehuda says a broken animal you can sell to a guy because what's he going to do with a broken animal? The guy is going to shecht it right away and nobody's going to know that it came from a Jew. So therefore, he says you can sell a, a broken animal to a guy. Ben Becerra Mate Besus. Ben Becerra says you're allowed to sell a horse to a guy because why? A horse was generally used only to ride on. Well, riding is not carrying a load because riding, as humans ride on animals, and, and riding the animal, as we have a din, chai noises atzmoy, that the, the rider is actually carrying himself. So really, the horse is not really being over anything if it has a rider on it. It's not, it's not a, 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 a load. So therefore, Bebeseira permitted selling a horse to a guy. Next, next part of the Mishnah. Malkam If the minig was to eat roasted meat on the night of Pesach, you're allowed to eat. But there was a meaning in some places, not to eat roasted meat on Pesach, because it looks like you're eating carbon Pesach outside the base of English. Then you have to follow the meaning of that place and not to eat. 
I think most people have a minig not to eat roasted meat on, uh, on, the, on the Seder night for this reason, because it looks like you're eating carbon pasta outside. A person's not to say, Bosazela Pesachu, that this, this meat is my Pesach. You go over to the piece of meat that's in front of you, and you say to that meat, even uh, this, this frozen meat that you see in the, in the refrigerator is, is, is my carbon Pesach. Because it looks like, it looks like you're making a behema holy. And you're eating a carbon Pesach outside the, the Beis Amigdash, outside the Yerushalayim. So therefore, you're not allowed to say to a, a slaughtered meat, even though you're, you mean to say probably is, I'm going to use this for meat for Seder night, you should not say that, that this meat is for Pesach. Amar Papa, our Papa said, Dafka Basar, only the meat. You shouldn't say anything about the meat that you're going to eat Seder night. Avachite, but we, loy. You, 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 there's no problem saying that I'm saving this wheat for carbon Pesach. The mintel apischa karma. You, what you're trying to say is that um, these wheat are, I'm using it, saving it for Pesach to make matzahs from it. So it, it, you don't mean to say uh, that I'm, I, I'm saving this wheat to sell, to use the money to buy a carbon Pesach. That's not what you say. Everybody understands when you go to wheat and say, this is for Pesach, you mean to say that I'm going to bake matzahs with this meat. Says the Gemara, boss Eloi, with meat, with meat, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. May sive, I'll say, I'll say, I'll give you a question. Um, Omar Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi said, the Bryce says, Rabbi Yaisi told over a story. Tudus ish roimi, there was a man, great man, Tudus, who lived in Rome. He was the, like the, the Godel in Rome. Hinegas bede roimi, he, he, he customed the people of Rome, that he allowed the people of Rome to eat roasted goats on the night of Pesach, right? On the night of Pesach, it roasted, it roasted exactly how it looked on the night of Pesach. So they sent to him, they, the, from the, when the people in Eretz Yisrael heard what Tudus is, is, is allowing the people of Rome to do, they told him, if you were not to this, we would put you in cherem. It looks like you're, you're, you're giving to the Jewish people to eat holy, the, the carbon Pesach outside in Rome. What do you mean? He's giving kachim outside Rome? There was no, there wasn't shecht in the base of English. It was shecht in Rome. He just allowed them to roast it like a carbon Pesach. Ella Ema, they told him, Korav, you're very close. It's very similar to Kachim. It looks like the people are eating Kachim outside the, the base of English. So now, the way the story goes is because he allowed them to roast the meat the same way, in the same fashion that they would roast the carbon pesa, which is that they would take the insides and certain parts of it, the entrails, and put it, roast it on top of the meat, on a spit, the same way you roasted the carbon pesa. But a plate, so the only problem they had with him is because it was mukulas. It was roasted in the same way that the, the, the carbon pesa was roasted in. That's when they had the problem. She'en mukulas, but if it wasn't roasted in the same way, in other words, it's just a plain piece of meat, right? No, they would not have had a problem. Uh, would not have had a problem. And therefore, the question is, the question is, Kasha, it's a kasha against Rav, who just said that even a single piece of meat, a single tiny po- roasted meat, not the whole animal, but a tiny roasted meat, if you say it's for carbon Pesach, that's a problem. Amre, so the answer is the difference. Mikulis, if it looks roasted, if it's a whole animal roasted in the same way as a, uh, as a carbon Pesach, then it's a problem. Loishna Omar, Loishna Loyamar. It doesn't matter if you said this is carbon pesach or, and you didn't say, or you didn't say it. it it's so, it's so you, when it's brought to the table, it looks like a carbon pesach. So I don't care if you said it or you didn't say it. But she'en but what if it was not roast, it was not brought whole like the carbon pesach. So then that makes a difference. Pirish, if you said pasach that pesach, that this beat is a pesach, yes. Loi pirish, but if you didn't say so, then loi, it's 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 not a problem. So that's the difference. 
If it's a plain piece of meat, then if you said this is my carbon pass, this is paste for Pesach, that's a problem. Don't say anything. But a, to take a whole goat and roast it the same way as car, as they used to do um, in 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 their, in in the Eretz Yisrael in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, that no matter what you shouldn't do. So the Gemara says, who who said over the story it was a person named. Rab Asi, Rab Yaisi. Rab Yaisi said over the story about Tudis. Rab Achim Masna Lo Lo Masni Rab Shimon. Rab Asi said Rab Shimon was the the one that said over the story. And the Gemara says like this: Maskev Lo Rab Sheishes Bishlo Melamanda Tony Lo Rab Yaisi. It makes sense. Rab Yaisi was the one that told over the story of Tudis because Nicha. That makes sense. El Lo Melamanda Masni Rab Shimon Min Nicha. If it were, the one that said that Rab Shimon was the one that said over the story, is that does that make sense? Well, now we learned in the Mishnah, Rab Shimon poiter shloi hisnadev kederech hamisnadvin. Rab Shimon says a concept. If a guy in, in another area, and we're going to apply it to what to what was said over here. If a person says hare alai mincha from barley, now you know a mincha cannot be brought from barley; it has to be brought from wheat. So since you, so the Tanakama holds that since he said Harei Alai Mincha, he has to bring a Mincha. The fact that he added the word barley, we ignore that. Rav Shimon says you don't have to bring anything because what makes his words effective is the last final words that he said. He said, I want to make a, a, a barley Mincha, which is impossible. There's no such a thing of a barley Mincha. And therefore, uh, he thought you could. And therefore, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So therefore, same thing over here. This Gidi Mukulas, what's why is it similar to Kachim? When you're roasting it, you didn't say the, this is a carbon pesach, you're just taking a goat and roasting it that way. So that's not the normal way. Uh, that's not the normal way you maktish a carbon pesach. A normal way you maktish a carbon pesach is when you maktish it when it's alive, you shecht it when it's alive. So you're not maktish it the normal way. So there's no nobody would confuse it that way. So therefore, according to Rav Shimon, the, the fact, according to Rav Shimon, one would be permitted to use Mekulis Gedi on Pesach. So why would Rav Shimon requote a story where he himself would hold it's not a problem? Now, Amale Ravina, Rav Ashi, Rav says, the one that said Rav Yaisi said over the story, is that a problem? Is that also good? Amar Rava, Rava said, Rav Shimon b'shitis Rav Yaisi Amra. Rav Shimon holds like Rav Yaisi as well. And the Amar, Rav Yaisi was the one that came up with this idea, the Afbik Mar Tvar of Adam Nitvas, that you always look at the last words that the person said, and that's what makes it effective. So therefore, they, they, my love, don't you say, Mid Rav Shimon Savalak Rav Yaisi, since Rav Shimon holds like Rav Yaisi, that you always look at the last words, Rav Yaisi, with Sava Lok Rab Shimon. Rab Yaisi would hold like Rab Shimon. And therefore, by the case of the Minchas Saorim, the guy would say, Hare Alai Mincha from the barley, Rab Yaisi would hold like Rab Shimon that you don't have to bring anything because you look at the final words that he said, because Rab Yaisi is of that opinion. What makes a person, what makes something effective? The final words that you said. And therefore, the final words that you said is that you want to bring a, a Mincha from barley. That's it. So, so it, it, you, you didn't say anything. So the same thing over here, Rabbi Yaisi would also hold that Gedi Mekulas, let's apply it, a very stretch, but by the Gedi Mekulas, since nobody makes Hegdish that way, so it's, it's of course, no one's going to confuse a Gedi Mekulas for a regular carbon Pesa. So Rabbi Yaisi himself, who repeated the story, why should he have a problem of what Tudis did? How could somebody make a mistake? The guy says, Gedi Mekulas, and makes it look like a carbon Pesach. What's the problem? Uh, no one makes a carbon Pesach that way. You call a carbon Pesach when it's alive, not when it's dead and roasted. So the Gemara says, no. The answer is, loy, not so. Rab Shimon Savalak Rab Yaisi. Rab Shimon would hold like Rab Yaisi. By the case of the Mincha Saorim, it would, it would, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have to bring a carbon Mincha. Loy Rab Yaisi Savalak Rab Shimon. Rabbi Yossi would not hold like Rabbi Shimon because Rabbi Yossi would hold that that since Rabbi Yossi would hold that since there's an, a person we have a concept a person's never saying words for nothing so even when he says Hare Alai Mincha Saorim in that case 
Rabbi Yaisi would say, you ignore his final words. You only look at the words, Hare Alai Mincha. In this that case, Rabbi Yaisi would drop away what he said at the end, and you would, he would take a hold, Rabbi Yaisi would hold, that you would, you would just look at what he, Hare Alai Mincha, and Hare Alai Mincha, he would have to bring. So, in, so by derivation, since Rabbi Yaisi would hold that you would, that, even though it's not the normal way of being misnadav, we try to reinterpret it as it to mean something. So Rabbi Yaisi would also probably hold strictly that what Tudis did was wrong. Because Eina Hanami, I would say that you can't be confused for regular carbon Pesach, but it looks like a carbon Pesach, and therefore Rabbi Yaisi would have a problem with that. So the best one to tell over the story about Tudis and about having a problem with Tudis was Rabbi Yaisi. Now the Gemara just ends off with the thing. I don't know if you've ever made a trip to Rome, but they, there's a certain type of people there in Rome. So the Gemara, the Gemara wants to know and ends off with a nice story. Tudish ish roimi, hava, oi bal hava. Was he just a great Talmud Chacham? And, 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 or was he just a powerful person, like a bully type? And so what, what type of person was this Tudis? Toshma, because we learned over here that Tudis made drushes. Oy darash Tudis Isroimi. He gave us a drusha of this week's parsha. The parsha, the the the, tar, the he made a drusha in a pasuk. Ma ro chenani yishol vazaria. Why did chenani yishol and zaria that refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue? Statue. Shemoshu nafsh asma kedusha sam lekivshen eish that gave up their lives to throw themselves into a fire rather than to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. What made them do such a thing? They, they said a kalvachoymer to themselves, they darshan from the, the frogs in this week's sedra. Frogs are not mitzvah to give up their lives, but some frogs attempted to give up their lives by jumping into Paroi's oven. Some of them had to go into Paroi's house and homes, and some had to go into the ovens and, and the kneading bowls. Now, every frog could say, I'm not going into the oven, I'm going somewhere else. But some frogs ended up joving into a hot oven. When is a kneading bowl next to a, a oven? When the, uh, the, the oven is hot, that's when you put the kneading bowl next to the oven. So the, the, they were actual frogs that gave up their lives. God said, go to Mitzrayim and, 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 and become and make problems there. And some frogs chose not just to go into the bedroom of Paray, but actually go into the ovens, the hot ovens. So that's what Hanani Mishol Bazami, after reading Parshas Ve'era, came to conclude that the Tzvardim are not Mitzvah, are not commanded to give up their lives. Anu Shemitzvah, not Kedusha Sem. We are commanded to give up our lives. Achachas to Mimikadosh Hashem. Achachas Kama Vakama. We should jump in. We should not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's idol. And rather jump into Kivshan Eish. Now, Nebuchadnezzar's idol was not Aboy Zora. It was just done for like, you know, like you have a Lincoln Memorial or something like that. It's, it's just out of respect. But since Nebuchadnezzar he viewed himself as an idol, they wanted to be machmir on themselves for, for a Kiddush Hashem and not to bow down to the idol. So that proves that since Tudis gave such a nice drasha, he must have been somewhat of a Talmud Chacham. And the final thing the Gemara says, he was a great person, Rabbi Yis Tudis, Rabbi Yosi Bar Oven Ama, Matel Malay Lekis Shel Talmud Chacham Haya. He would allow, he would tell Talmud Chachamen, he would bring merchandise to Talmud Chachamen, uh, like so they could sell on Amazon and make business. In other words, he gave a loud, he taught Talmud Chachamen how to make money for themselves, not to take money, but how to make money by selling items. The Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Whoever fills up the, the storage house for Tamid Chachamen with items to sell so that they can sell and make money on their own. So, he will sit in the upper heaven. Rashi says that someone upstairs in the next, in the Oilam Ames, those will enter the Mechitzas of Chachma. There, somebody who is Bitzel HaKesef, who gave Tamit Echechamim from his possessions 
so they can have benefit from and being able to sell. This is what it is. It's not that the Talmud Chacham is taking money. Look what Rashi says. Noisin schayre le Talmud Chachamim lehis taker ba. He gives uh, uh, schayre, merchandise, Talmud Chachamim, to be able to make their own business. And that's something that is, a, there was the great thing of Tudis. And yet Tudis, despite being such a great person, uh, had one problem was he allowed the people of Rome to make a nice roasted goat on Ch- um, Pesach night, Seder night, which looked like a carbon Pesach, and that was frowned upon by some of the other uh, uh, Amor- people, Tanoim probably, who lived at that time. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you ever got a chance to visit Rome. It's such an old community that it was around even before the destruction of the second temple. So it's really, really old community. And so when the Gemara is quoting this to this, it's the time of the Tanoim. He lived there in Rome. And he probably allowed the, the Pesach programs there to have actual nice roasted goats that looked like the carbon Pesach mm-hmm. on, on, on uh, Seder night. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Good Chodesh. Good Chodesh. Good Chodesh, everybody. Good Chodesh. Yeah.